Hey guys, my name is Blue. What's up? I'm Gray. And we are Bluest. Hey yo. So today we wanted to share one of our an interpretation of one of our favorite songs growing up. Um, it's the butterfly song from Digimon, which is the opening to the first series. Um, and it's this song is a really really big part of Gray's childhood and as well as mine. And we know uh, we have a few friends overseas who also love this song. But what we realized is. Even though it's such a great song to us, we kind of wanted to share um, why it's such a good song. And since a lot of times with direct translations that you might find on um, the internet, we thought maybe um, the people who are listening and who don't understand Japanese, they might not really know what the meaning behind the song really is. So that being ask, said, yeah. this isn't some definitive thing. This is a completely our interpretation of it. Um, so it's not take it with a grain of salt but this is why we think this song rules and why it meant <laughs> so much growing up and going through it again at this age like sitting down and actually translating each word for word and seeing the story here um there's a lot more things that i found about it so let's get to it all right so Hang these up. are the lyrics that i translated and uh, Blue helped me po polish it up a little bit, so here we go. Alright, young butterfly on glimmering wind, I'm on my way to you. Okay, so at the very beginning we have the young butterfly. Direct translation wise, it's just kind of a joyous butterfly. Gokigen is the word that they use here, which means joyous, kind of jolly. But um, to me, uh, with the other lyrics coming up, it kind of, I kind of thought it was more of a, a youthful Butterfly is what they wanted to say is kind of what they wanted to portray. So I use young butterfly um, On glimmering wind. I'm on my way to you. So you, you get this very fresh kind of like very um, Youthful image is what I think right we go into the second stanza forget all the unnecessary thoughts We have no time to act better than we are. This is pretty much a, a direct translation And it's kind of we're always full of all these thoughts. Let's forget all of them um, Just let's stick with let's stick to what's important and stop acting like we're better. And what's better for a butterfly? I thought flying wise, what flies more free? It's kind of like, it's almost like he's talking to birds. He wants to be a bird, but he's just this little butterfly. It's kind of this um, imagery that I got. I'm wondering how I can reach the skies. Again, we're trying to reach the skies somewhere higher where birds can go higher and they can fly more freely versus butterflies that are a little bit more frail. They, they don't fly as high and then they kind of get like blown away. Um, but I don't even know my plans for tomorrow. So we worry about these big things, but hey, I don't even know what's tomorrow. So why do I even have to, why even think about that? Like, let's just keep it simple kind of thing. Again, very direct translation for this part. Going to the chorus. Uh, after waking up from an infinite dream, dreams infinite, anything happens. Your innocent, endearing thoughts may not survive this empty world. I want to say that this that was a very interpretive translation that's almost direct it's like that dark it's very dark they're saying the dream is really nice it's really colorful but when you wake up there's nothing in this world it's empty i was i think i was like nine when i heard this song and i was freaking out when i first heard it they tell you reality is very scary <laughs> yeah and so and then it goes into even with unreliable wings you're, they're unreliable they're frail they're butterfly wings they're not these amazing bird wings right i know you can fly and then in the song he does say on oh, my love it's kind of this like punchline to the chorus i think it's one of those things where they just kind of added some english phrases or words at the end so i think it should have been more like maybe with my love or something like that but it just didn't fit so on my love i kind of set aside we go to the second verse enlightened enlightened butterfly thing is it doesn't say enlightened again it's kind of it this joyous thing but the lyrics that come after this kind of show kind of explain that story so i use enlightened so there's a reason why i use that right okay so writing this earnest wind this is, this is a little interesting in japanese they use this word ichizu and it's a play on words it means in the context of a relationship, ichizu means um, dedicated, faithful, and there's only one way, and it's kind of kind of saying this wind only has one way, it leads me to you, and I'm going to be faithful, and so I use the word earnest, uh, writing this earnest wind, I'm going to go to you. Nuance is important at times. Okay, so this is another one. It's a little, it's a little hard to translate. In Japanese, they use the word aimai, 
and then it says which means vague or ambiguous. Igaini bendi is the second part of that line, and it's saying it's it's convenient. So vague words are convenient. Kinda didn't really sit with me well. It kind of sounded almost kind of evil. <laughs> um, in the context of a relationship, you don't really say vague words are better, better or anything like that. Or they that. convey feelings better. Right. Um, but that's not the that's not the feel that I got when I was reading the actual lyrics in Japanese, and that that's definitely a language thing, a culture thing. And I thought they were trying to say nuance. And our character here, right, our little butterfly, is growing up. All right, and it's he's learning that nuance in words. Before, before he was this young butterfly that used to just say everything straightforward, no nuance. But he's learning nuance, and he's learning that. And then it kind of, uh, and it kind of ends the verse there by saying, "I tell myself as I sing my favorite pop song." And it's, I think that's just kind of like to kind of add on. Uh, it's a nice way to end the core, uh, the verse. It's really cool, I think, um, and. But there's not. I don't think there's like a super deep meaning. It could mean that he didn't used to listen to pop songs, but now he does. He's a new person. He used to think maybe he was pop edgy. songs are making him more confident, or it like could be, he's yeah. taking motivation from there. We don't. Yeah, we don't really know about that line. What's important is that we see our character growing, right? Okay. And then the pre-chorus. I'm wondering what I can do for this city to notice me. Almost direct translation here. Um, what do I have to do? You know, what do I have to do for this city to kind of like turn their heads? Like people listen to me. Like, come on! And then it's a waste of time just hoping and waiting. So stop just sitting there on your couch and do something. Right? Is what I think they're trying to say here. And then the second chorus is pretty similar to the first, with a couple of differences. Um, after waking up from an infinite dream, same. In this world full of dread, yarusenai is the word that they use in Japanese. Yarusenai yonnaka. And it is very close to dreadful. Um, again, very dark imagery here. Going off the rails might not be so bad. In this like completely, in this world where giving up is normal, just do something different. Just do something that's not normal. Might might be good. And then this is the important part. Though your new wings may be awkward. I know awkward is probably not the best, like most poetic word to use, but um, in Japanese, um, they talk about how stay she saw na image, which is kind of this, which kind of means this image that is supposed might stay on you, which is your awkward, your frail wings, right? O someta, which means to die, as in like to you die at a different color. So what they're trying to say is you have these new wings and you're not you're not used to it yet. You have these. Um, they might be a little awkward, but I know you can fly. And then we see we have that guitar awesome guitar solo right and then we go back to the two choruses and then it's the end of the song so we see this like this growth in this character and like he was like this little kid this little butterfly that learned how to really f flying was one thing and then he flew and then he kind of grows up right through this through his adventures and you know it could be with friends he can learn from friends he can learn from family and they just you can see this upward kind of like growth of this human, right? Isn't that familiar to the, to you? Exactly. That and story? It's, yeah. It's exactly the story of the characters in Digimon. In the most it's, subtle yeah, way ever, a, right? It's a metaphor of the characters in that show where they start off as kids who don't know about this other world, this digital world, and then their eyes are kind of opened up to it and they, I guess, grow as... I mean, grow into, I guess, you youth or young adults who, um, with a different like kind of mindset, and how they don't have to be swayed by the so-called wind anymore, and they can kind of take control over their own destiny, right? Right. So. And flying is this huge theme of, and it's a metaphor of growing up. And even if you fly at a certain place, you can still aim higher and flying. And that's why we think. Um, the, the name of the song is Butter uh, Dash Fly because flying, they wanted to focus on flying just like how like in when you see the word Beatles and then uh, the T is actually capitalized so you focus on the word beat. It's like that. It's like they're kind of like separating it and just having uh, the word fly. Just the same effect is what, I'm, what I think because flying is this huge, um, you know, obviously this huge theme in this song and also the story of Digimon, right? And 
growing up, I thought the first part about the, the, the dreary world or whatever, and this infinite dream was the digital world because they get to hang out with their Digimon. Well, they mm-hmm. can hang out with Digimon in their real world too, but you know what I mean. Like it's this kind of, uh, this different reality that they had. And you know, waking up from that is so sad. And as watching Digimon as a kid, that's how I felt, right? Because like watching it Sunday morning, it's like I'm in this dream world with all these Digimon get to hang out. And then after like next day I have to go to school or something. And it's like, I woke and up reality from Reality is bleak. Yeah. Right? So. <laughs> but kind of reading this whole story, I find a, I find this this character like, and of course, again, my interpretation doesn't have to, it's not the definitive like Koji Wada, like official or anything like that. But there's just, that, I think that I just really like the song. I like the music. I like the, the lyrics. And I just thought, you know, maybe it'd be cool to do that and hopefully do more. It doesn't have to be anime songs, but it could yeah. be other Japanese songs or just weeb songs that people like that they like, but they want to know what the story behind is. And so we thought we'd do this. So if people like it, we'll keep doing it. But yeah, yeah hope I hope you, you enjoyed enjoy it. it. Go watch Digimon. Let's go watch the new <laughs> 2020 Digimon. Okay? There's a movie coming out. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take we'll care. We'll see you next time.